Perfect. So we can start right from the time. Yeah. Cool. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to talk about help for anybody how to combine chat ops and declarative configurations effectively. <coughs> My name is Jonathan. I'm working for Scalable Minds, a software company in Germany, in Potsdam, next to Berlin. And we're building um, 3D image analysis tools, especially for the biomedical sector. Um, here you see one of our tools, which is WebNosos. Um, it's basically an application to view 3D image data and to annotate those. Um, we're deploying this application multiple times a day um, all over the globe for multiple clients, and I'll just use this as a use case um, for the talk. So I'm going to tell you more about chat ops, um, about declarative configurations, and those two are just theoretical concepts first and quite orthogonal, but if you want to combine them, you have to take care of some edge cases, and that will be the most technical part in the end, the effective combination of those two concepts. Um, in general, I want to talk more about the concepts um, and less about specific technologies. Um, I will just still use the names that we're using in our company still, um, but you can replace all the tools with something else, of course. So, about chat ops. Um, chat ops basically means you can command your operations from the chat. So, we have two use cases for that in our company. The first is to upgrade WebNosos for our clients. We have different Helm releases um, and we want to upgrade them usually um, multiple times a day and do that often and everybody wants to do that in our company. So, we had probably the same history as many of you. Um, we started to containerize our application. We had a look for orchestration management. We went with Kubernetes, um, which was a great choice back then. And now we're using also Helm to package this as we have multiple releases with slightly different configurations as, usu as usually. Um, so, we upgrade those different releases and also um, we want to manage our development releases which has spin up development instances of WebNosos um, on feature branches and upgrade them, spin them down again when we don't need them anymore. And those are regular tasks that anybody in our company wants to do. And not everybody is into Kubernetes and knows all the details and not everybody is into Helm and knows all the CLI. So we had a look into chat ops. Um, so, imagine um, you have a chatbot, let's call it Scotty, and you want to upgrade WebNosis, then you say, hey, grade me up, Scotty. <coughs> so, how does it actually look like? Um, okay, we have a company chat, in our case Slack, and we have an upgrade command, and we say upgrade WebNosis A, which is just um, the release of the WebNosis chart, and we want to upgrade it to another version. So. Then Scotty, um, which has access to our cluster, um, is saying, okay, I'm going to upgrade this, and hey, after some time, I'm done upgrading. So why do we actually want to do that and don't just use the Helm CLI? Well, the first thing is um, anybody can, can now go into our chat and copy that command and just put in a new version. If I do that privately on my shell, Nobody else can see in my shell history and have a look what I did before. So uh, it's easily copy copyable in the whole company. Um, also, anybody can see this within this channel that we're using and can ask questions. For example, hey, did we include this cool new feature? Well, not yet. Um, but you see, we gain visibility um, to the steps that we are doing and everybody can communicate on that. We are all in this chat anyways, and we have faster interactions than usually in pull requests or uh, just with commits or anything. So, let's have a look. Are we actually using this? Well, yes, um, for upgrading our releases regularly, um, we're doing th we did that in the last year 550 times roughly, and mentioning our dev releases um, 760 times, and we are a bunch of like uh, 15 people. So that's quite a number um, for us at least. 
and that helps everybody to engage more with our infrastructure tools that we have. Um, so in total, in the last year, we had 1,300 interactions over the chat with the system. So what you could simply do and implement this is have the chat and use it basically as a proxy um, to your Helm CLI, um, have the Helm CLI maybe running in your cluster already and just upgrade anything from there. Um, now let's get to the second topic, declarative configuration. So declarative configuration, it's been in other talks as well, is just that you don't state imperatively what to do, but you st um, state what you want to have. You define a specific state and you want some mechanism that applies the state to your system, in our case, um, the Helm. So you know this already, I mean, you've probably written Kubernetes resources and there it's quite typical to use um, kube control apply and just have some declarative YAML instead of doing kube control edit all the time and managing everything in place. And probably you've written some Helm charts and there your templates are declarative as well. But just one last step is missing um, with the Helm stack that is currently there and that's Helm releases. So when you're typing Helm install my chart and you add some version or you set um, some specific value and overwrite this value, you have state in there that you put in there manually and not any more anymore declaratively. So we want to do that. So for the first step, um, we create overwrite YAMLs where we have the values that we have normally in our charts and just the um, values that we overwrite usually maybe with set we just put it in a file, that's it. So for our WebNosis A release, we just specify the tag that we want and some other values. At the moment, we put this into version control system, we gain a lot of benefits. And at that moment, we can also call it GitOps, um, if we use Git, of course. Um, we gain reproducibility because we can just take any file here and install it again, upgrade to this exact version, and we get exactly the same system running again if everything is configured to be immutable. Um, also, we have the whole reversions in Git, so we can revert to some specific revision and can use that basically also as another rollback strategy. And we can have pull requests, whatever you know um, from your normal code that you have in your repository anyways, um, you have pull requests, you can discuss on them, you can have CI, um, everything. And that helps already to reason about your state more in detail. So we want this basically for our home Helm releases. There are multiple solutions. Um, what we'd use is um, Helm file. Um, there is parallel, another talk about fl flux. I think this works as well. There are other solutions as well. I'll just pick Helm file here. And um, what it looks like there is that you specify, for example, a Helm file YAML, um, and you specify the releases you want to have with the name, with the namespace, for example, the chart, and your values file. There are other options how to specify this, but this, in the end, is a declarative configuration for your whole state of the application. You can have it for one release or multiple, it doesn't matter in the end. And what Helm file can do is now have Helm file apply and upgrade your state in Helm um, to exactly what you stated here. So Helm file gives you the mechanism to synchronize your declarative configuration with Helm. So to wrap this up, um, we have chat ops and this gives us nicer interactions, um, it's accessible, usable, um, you have visibility throughout your company and you have fast interaction rates you can discuss with other people. And on the other hand, you have declarative configurations in this um, case Helm file and this allows you to have reproducible releases, um, to have the typical interactions you know from your code anyways with pull requests, with reasoning in discussions there 
and to have reversions, um, whatever you like. So, as I said, let's talk about how to combine those two, actually. Um, this would be a typical continuous de delivery um, workflow, um, what you could also call GitOps if your version control system is Git. Um, you have your things in your repository, all the declarative configurations, uh, your Helm file YAMLs, and you apply this to your Helm uh, via Helm file. So if we're taking the approach from before uh, for chat ops, we're just having chat, um, a chat interface and command Helm file via the chat interface. That might be the naive solution, but actually um, we're losing there a lot of benefits we have from the configurations. Because in this case, um, we have another route that just triggers um, Helm file, um, but is not actually applying any state changes in the declarative configurations. So what we instead want to do is apply changes from our chat to this declarative configuration and that let this then be reflected into Helm via Helm file. So what we do here is we say, okay, upgrade WebNosos to some specific version. Then this probably has a checkout of this repository, um, changes this repository and updates there some configurations, um, pushes this into our ground truth in some repository upstream and have this applied into Helm. Now, um, this is nice and we can reason about things that come from our chat and discuss upon that, but we can also still have changes right here in this version control system. So here we also want to get notified in the chat if somebody is changing just anything here, which is still a valid operation. I mean, we can just change the configurations here as usual through pull requests, whatever. And that's why we also have a route where we look at the diff um, in Helm file and just post this back to the chat. So everybody is notified whenever ever something happens, either through the chat or already um, just directly in the version control system through normal changes. So technically, for us, we have a Slack command here um, that then just triggers some operations in the repository. We have git commit. Um, this gets pushed to GitHub in our case. There we have a GitHub webhook um, that then triggers something that we have running in our cluster. So this is just a small service uh, that is running in our cluster, listening um, for this webhook, and then applying the changes to the whole cluster and also posting the diff back to the chat. So we are notified, A, when this operation from the chat is finished, or we are also notified if just somebody is changing different things from here. So we have basically two main interaction modes, and that's the important case here, why we combine this actually. Um, we have the one where we have regular updates. That's what we do on a daily basis, what everybody in the team does. And this is pretty easy through the chat, as you've seen. On the other side, we have the usual administration where you change your Kubernetes resources, where you change your charts, the templates, um, have different subcharts, whatever complex operations you have, you can still do them in your repository and have both system combines. So this is just a commit to your system that you might have anyways if you're using GitOps already. So the numbers again, we had 1,300 interactions through the chat the last year um, versus, versus our manual direct interactions um, in this repository that were like 240. So those are typical, the more complex operations where you're actually moving the big parts, and um, that doesn't happen so often. It's much more important to ease the burden on those things that are happening on a daily basis. And that actually makes this system worthwhile for us. Besides that, we are also having around 800 um, interactions from the CI system. We're having nightly builds that are also um, updating some configuration here, 
that's actually using the same component as the chat. The chat actually is just triggering another service that is running in the cluster, which then changes the config. And this middle service here is also triggered from the continuous integration to then um, have some specific updates on our um, configuration state. Just a second. So to wrap this up once again, um, we have now chat ops plus some declarative configuration and this gives us reproducibility, which you might know from GitOps as well as version control system, of course. Plus you have combined it with high visibility. So you can discuss about those changes that you do through your chat. You can also discuss about the changes that you have through commits because they are also reflected back into the chat and you have a super simple interface where anybody can copy some commands from somebody else and doesn't have to deal with all the internals um, of Kubernetes and Helm. So I've hoped to have given you some idea how to add Helm for anybody, for your organization maybe too, how to increase um, the engagement with your infrastructure system and maybe make it Helm for everybody. Thanks and let's discuss some questions. Thank you. <laughs> Whoever wants. Sorry, come again. Okay. Yep. You're asking about security. Um, actually, for us, um, let me go back to that. So here, um, we use Slack for that and we have some channels um, and only in those channels um, the bot is listening to those specific commands that we are using. Um, you could have also more fine-grained um, security um, with access control, but then probably that wouldn't be in the chat itself, but in the service that is listening behind the chat. Um, we don't need that at all, um, as just all developers are in this channel and that works for us. But if you have specific um, role-based authentication, you can include that basically in the service that is running behind the chat. Other mm -hmm. yeah. questions? Uh, how do you deal with uh, configuration changes? Like, I guess, will you upgrade like a specific application from one release to another? But I don't know, do you like deal with different customers have the same version of the application with different <coughs> configuration, do you also change it with the, um, the same workflow or you set it up once and then change it? Or um, so, if we go here, um, that's actually what we set up usually in our uh, repository. So we have different configurations for those different releases that you're saying. Um, and one of those specificities is which version we are running. Um, this is what we upgrade through the chat. But everything else, um, we usually set once or upgrade it at some point in time, but not that often. And that happens um, just in the repository. Um, so we have those override values that I showed you. And those are different from release to release. So have we have one of those override values file per release. So there we are specifying for every release which is different um, from the others. So those are basically the 240 interactions we have here. Yeah. Was one more question? No. Okay. Great, thank you. I think we are a bit early in time, but enjoy lunch and see you later in the hallway. <laughs>